And to do, today I want to talk about the reports. Uh, I saw a lot of interest in this topic, and it's not surprising because uh, good reporting uh, is one of the key success factors of your test automation. The good report will, will save your time, and the bad one can ruin all your job. My talk today will be divided in three parts. Uh, at first, we'll talk about uh, reporting challenges and problems. Then I will describe our solution called Allure. It's open source framework. And I will finish with a short demo how to use our framework with your JUnit test. So let's go. Uh, raise your hand if you ever created the test execution report. A lot of people here. And raise your hand now if you think that your report is really nice and clear and everyone can understand what's going on. <laughs> so, a few people. Okay. And maybe you think it's a crappy one. Yeah, a bit of criticism here. Okay. Uh, so, what is the problem? Why so hard to create a good report? I think the key feature of good report it should give you the speed and precision in bug detection, in problem detection. Let me explain what I mean. When you write unit test and you run it and it fails, you get the exact line of code where the problem is. When you run API test and it fails, you have not only the code you interact with, but container running your code, web server running container, maybe web balancer and every part can be broken. So you should aggregate some additional information, such as requests, response, dumps, headers, and so on, to find where the problem is. And things go on even worse with web tests, because you have your code, container running your code, web server running container, uh, web balancer, browser, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and even Selenium itself can be broken and you really need a lot of information aggregate and then display to find out where the problem is. But usually you just attach a screenshot, which displays you what is the problem, but it's not explaining why. And here we come to the second major feature of a good report. You need to collect and then present really a lot of information of your test execution. And the third challenge, you should present it in a different ways for different people. Are there any managers here? Test leads, managers? Put a hand. Okay. What do you want to see in, as a manager in a report? More information than we see today. Yeah, you have to see overall information, right? The <coughs> big green or red button, it's everything okay or everything is broken. Are there any manual testers here? Okay, what do you want to see as a manual tester? You want to see the reason. You want to see how it's broken. You want to see the test scenario itself to verify this, uh, that is, uh, what you ask for or not and why it's broken. So actually, you should present the same data collected during test execution in a different ways for different people. And actually, you need uh, different reports for these people. And the last problem that you have no time to, to do this, right? Because you think, OK, I wrote a lot of tests already. I will handle the reporting later. But usually, it will never happen. In, uh, with this, all these things in mind, we decided to create an open source solution which called Allure. Uh, Allure is a French word which means how the horse goes and we call it because we use the steps as a, one of the basics of, of our framework. I will explain it a little later. The second uh, major feature is a cross language. Uh, we use three languages basically in our test automation. We use Java a lot we use a little Python, and we use a JavaScript 
a little JavaScript in our test automation. So from the very beginning, we decided that our framework should be cross-language, language independent. And the third major, major feature of, of this framework is easy integration. We have a lot of tests, and the more tests you have, the more time you spend trying to adopt this test to new technologies, new frameworks. But in the end, uh, it's only reporting, and you shouldn't spend a lot of your time just to get a nice report. So, it's an easy integration. Uh, here's a link to a demo report. You can open it on your laptop right now, or if you have iPad or mobile phone, you can open, it will work on mobile devices as well. You can play around, maybe provide some feedback, bugs on GitHub. And to understand how we made all this, let's talk about architecture, framework architecture. Basically, it consists of three parts. The first one is adapter, the second and the, and the central one is a model, and the third one is a report itself. Let's start with the model because it's a central part of framework. By model, I mean the data presentation model. Uh, we don't want to start from completely from, from scratch because there is a lot of uh, test, test uh, data models already exist, and the basic one is a X unit model. Uh, who knows the basic concepts of X unit? Any suggestions? Okay. Uh, the first one is test suite, which actually connected with the test class usually. And the second one and smaller one is the test case, which connected with, with uh, test method. And there is how it looks in XML. When you run your test, you get this standard X unit uh, output. Let's see what we have here. We have a time, which is actually test execution duration. We have a some names, test suite name, which is class name, and test uh, case name, which is method name. And we have some overall cal calculated information about this, this run, how much tests running, failed, broken, and so on. Uh, and at the first step, we want to transform a little this format to get rid of useless information and add some required data. We choose useless information. It's here. Actually, it's already calculated value, and you don't need them in your model. Uh, the model should contain only raw data, so you calculate and process them later. So we remove all these things and replace it, it with each own test case status. Is it passed, failed, or broken? The same as the suit. And timing for every test case, start and stop time. And it, now it looks like this. You have see test case, the start and stop timestamp, and uh, test execution status. You can see the empty tags, steps, attachments, and labels. We'll use them to enrich our data model. And the first things to do is add some attachments. Uh, in our framework, we don't limit you to use some specific attachments. You can use HTML, JSON, plain text, XML, uh, images, or even video, wherever you want. And as soon as you can attach HTML, you can actually create a JavaScript application right inside your report. For example, you can write a JavaScript which, uh, with a button to restart this failed test. Or you can add comment section and wherever you want, actually. The second step is the steps itself. Uh, who knows what the steps is? Who knows what the steps approach? Nobody? Cucumber users here? Yeah, some kind of this. Actually, the steps is a simple user action. For example, click button or type text, and so on. And when you write your tests 
in the steps terms, you get the simple and clear test scenario, which you can read, understand, and write really easily. And of course, you want to see the nested steps, because when you have the steps chains, for example, login step uh, consists of three steps, type login, type password, uh, and click button, you want to hide it when everything goes well. And we added each step his own status, so we can detect when the problem occurs, exactly the step when it appears, and each step can have his own attachments. And the last part of data model is labels. Who knows what is this? Storyboard, yes. Right, it's an agile board with uh, features and stories on it. And of course, we added the features and stories to this framework so you can annotate your test and then track how your test covers your business requirements. Great things. So, all in all, we start with standard X unit format, which uh, provided by all default uh, unit frameworks, add some raw data during the exec execution, then you can add some attachments, then you can introduce steps, add labels, and now you get the Allure model. Okay, we get the model, but how we get the data, data for this model? We get it with adapter. Actually, every adapter consists of two parts. The first one is a language API for every specific language. Uh, it's a bunch of methods to fire the different test events, such as test start, test, test stop, or you should make an attachment, and so on. And using this API, it's rather simple to create uh, specific framework adapters. Uh, as I mentioned before, we use uh, Java, Python, and JavaScript in our automation. So we started with just three adapters. It was GUnit, Karma, and PyUnit. And pretty fast, we get a lot of these ad adapters imp implemented. You can see we have a .NET integration with NUnit adapter. We have a PHP unit adapter, Scala, Codeception. I don't even know what is this. Airspec, and even Cucumber. So it's really easy to create the adapter. Okay, now we have an adapter and we have our model filled with data. Let's get the report itself. As I mentioned before, we, in our data model, we have only raw data, so we should to process them at first. So the first step is processing this data to get some statistic, calculated values, and so on. And at the same time, we transform this XML into the lightweight JSON, which will be used later. And at the second step, we use AngularJS to create the beautiful Web 2.0 HTML report. You can see on the demo link I gave you. And this step can be made in a bunch of ways. We have a command line tool, standalone. We have a Maven plugin integration, and we have a plugins for CI tools, such as Jenkins, TeamCity, and Bamboo. So you can use your tool. So, Allure architecture. We start with XUnit data. Then we, with the help of adapter, provide some additional data to get the Allure model, which then process it uh, with data generator to uh, transform this XML into JSON. And in the end, we create the report. And the beautiful, beautiful things about the architecture is you can replace every part of this chain, except maybe the model, because everything based on the model. If your framework didn't provide the standard X unit uh, output, you can make it yourself. If you don't like the report phase we created, you can create your own report phase based on the data we provided. And now I can show you the demo, some allure in action.
here's a, uh, here's a simple Java project built with Maven. As you can see, it's only GUnit and Selenium in dependencies, and Maven Surefire plugin to run test, and Surefire report plugin to generate the default Surefire report. The test itself is pretty simple. We get the driver at first, then we open search page, find element, type search text we want to find, then we get the results by the reference provided and assert that the result is not zero and we get the expected text. Uh, let's make it work with Allure. As you can see, the code didn't change, but there are a few changes in a POM XML. We added Allure GUnit adapter to dependencies and there is a uh, configuration section for Maven Surefire plugin. You can find everything on project website, so don't worry. And we replaced Surefire plugin with Allure Maven, Maven plugin. Actually, you can stop here because that's everything you need to get started. I told you before about easy integration. This is an easy integration. You just change a few lines of your configuration, not the code even, just configuration and you get a working report. Uh, of course, you will not get all the features, uh, but it's, uh, you will get already much more than basic Surefire report. Okay, let's move on. Uh, to get mast out of Allure, let's modify our code and uh, divide our test in steps. As I told you, the step is a simple user action, so the three steps will be here. At first, we'll open the page, then we will type text and click search button, and in the end, we want to assert that we see the expected results in the search. Uh, the steps itself uh, is a very interesting and very useful, powerful solution to organize your test. As you can see, I define the steps right here, but it's really no matter. I hope you don't write the code like this and you're using page object pattern. So you can annotate directly in your page object. Annotate the page object methods with the steps and everything will work as a charm. Okay, some step generalization here to make it reusable. Nothing unusual. The next step is to add some features and stories to link with our business requirements. The story will be search and a feature simple search, simple text search. You can define the few features or few stories for every task class or method. And in the end, we want to add some attachment in a web test is screenshot usually, but we can return the byte array here, so no matter what type of attachment it will be, we'll take it as a standard way for web driver. And now we should call our screenshot method after the test execution. Not the best way to, to do it. Actually, in GUnit, we have a rule mechanism to done such things, and let's run it. I call maven commands, clean for clean up on all artifacts, test to actually run the test. You can see the test execution here. We get uh, Firefox, type in text and get the result. Then I run the site to build, to build the report itself with a maven report builder and run the JT server local to quickly find the report on local host. And that's it. We have a overview tab, which is for entry point for everyone. Then we have a defects tab. Uh, we have no defects here. Great job. I can grab some beer. Uh, but when you see the fails here, 
uh, they are stacked by error message. So it's pretty simple to find out what's going on if a lot of error happens. Then we have a X unit section with all our steps defined here and attached we created. Pretty simple and clear. Then behavior tab uh, with the features and stories we define here in our test. Some charts for managers, they like charts. And timeline with a test execution. And that's all. Thank you. The, uh, our project website where you can find the code itself, documentation, examples, and everything you want. And the, my contacts, Twitter and email. Thank you. It depends on what you want. You can make it for the whole test suite or the whole test, test case or even for one single step. Not every step, but maybe when you made assertions to see the error happened. Yes, you, you will see it folded but you can uh, unfold it in a report. I think we should, sorry? Uh, from which framework? Test NG. The default test ng framework didn't give you the attachments, the steps. You will see only the. Can you repeat, please? Ah, okay. Okay. Uh, the question is, uh, can you see the history of the test execution in this report? Uh, the answer is no, because it's not the reporting feature. The storage is a different story. And uh, answering your question about what is different with test ng, uh, this framework is language independent. And test ng is only Java. <laughs>